Good evening, viewers, subscribers, Kingdom Saints. Just want to share this with you all before I call it a night. Before I call it a night. Amen. Every true Christian wants to have a winning witness. A testimony that demonstrates Jesus makes a difference in their life, right? They want the world around them to see Jesus in them. But unfortunately, that is not always the case. All too frequently, the image the world has of Christians is one of hypocrisy and compromise. Most people who profess to be Christians today live lives that are not significantly different from the world around them. Survey after survey demonstrates that evangelical Christians are as likely to embrace lifestyles every bit as hedonistic, materialistic, self-centered, and sexually immoral as the world in general. Divorce is more common among born-again Christians than in the general American population. Only 6% of evangelicals tied, and white evangelicals are the most likely people to object to neighbors of another race. Sexual promiscuity of evangelical youth is only a little less outrageous than that of their non-evangelical peers. You and I don't have to look outside the church to find adultery, spousal abuse, crooked business practices, gossip, jealousy, and strife. Sadly, all of these things are often found among God's people. And it is so obvious that you don't have to be on the inside to notice it. The world around us has become keenly aware of the inconsistencies in our witness. You might say, well, that's fine and good, but we're not the only church which has hypocrites. All churches have people who profess one thing and practice another. And while you would be right, I would like to point out that only followers of Jesus living in obedience have and know the truth. We are the only ones who serve a risen Savior who has the power to transform our lives to enable us to overcome the world. If the world around us does not see a difference in our lives, how are they to know that Jesus is real? If we don't live a different life, a transformed life, what hope do they have that they can be delivered from sin, set free from its power, and transformed into a newness of life? Is it any wonder we are losing the cultural war? Mm. Is it any wonder that many people say Christians are the biggest reason they don't want to accept Christ? Is this something new to our culture? Are we the only group of Christians to have ever been consumed by this degree of compromise? And did Jesus know this would happen within his church? It is not enough that we should merely know truth. Truth must be put into practice if it is to be beneficial to us. Remembering that we have not been given scripture simply to make us smart, but primarily to instruct us in godliness. Jesus sums up his great sermon by calling us to action, by telling us the reason he has taught us is so that we might be obedient. He says that hearing without doing is foolish. And that wisdom dictates we practice what he has preached. There are three things Jesus says in these verses that demand our attention. The first is our reception to his message. The second is our response. 
responds to his message. And the third is the results of our response. The results of our response. There are a variety of things people want to attribute to Jesus. But what have we heard Jesus say? We have heard him teach on what it means to become a Christian. The Beatitudes show us that we must become humble or poor in spirit. We must mourn over our sin, meekly accepting God's view of us as sinners in need of a Savior. We must hunger and thirst after righteousness and find that only Jesus can satisfy that hunger and thirst. Then we will be filled, transformed by the renewing of our hearts and minds. Hallelujah. He has taught us to let our light shine before men, so that they will see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. We have heard Jesus say that it is not keeping the law externally, but rather what goes on in our hearts that he sees. Sin is not something we merely do externally, but something that begins internally in the realm of our thoughts and our desires. We have heard Jesus say that our words matter. And that if we are his disciples, we will live our lives ever cognizant of that reality that God knows our hearts and sees our every action. We will be loving, forgiving, compassionate, faithful, and trusting. And that we will make his righteousness and kingdom the priority of our lives. This is what we have heard Jesus say. There are many who do not take what Jesus says seriously. They are like those in the parable of the seeds and the sour, who hear the word but soon forget what they have heard, who allow other things, material things or temporal things, to drown out the words of our Lord. Contrary to what many think of our Lord's teaching, his message has not been one of lofty, warm, fuzzy platitudes, <laughs> but a serious call to discipleship, a message which calls us to abandon ourselves and submit our wills, our hearts, and our lives to his lordship. It is, so, it is a solemn call to a devout and committed kind of discipleship that will separate us from the world around us. Make no mistake about it. This is what we have heard Jesus say. And now, having heard what Jesus has said, he calls us to not merely hear it, but to do it, to obey it. Look at verse 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who built his house on the rock. Throughout scriptures, we are called not merely to hear, but to obey. James 1, 22-25 says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking at his own face in the mirror. For he looks at himself, goes away, and right away forgets what kind of man he is. But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer who acts, this person will be blessed in what he does. Jesus tells us that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. The emphasis is not upon knowing, but upon responding positively. We know a lot more than we practice. 
like those who are ever learning but are never able to come to the knowledge of truth. There are many professing Christians who are ever learning, but because the knowledge of truth comes by applying the truth to their lives, they have never really come to understand what it is on a practical or experiential level. It never ceases to amaze me how many of the Christians in third world countries, Christians who are fortunate to own a Bible, much less than any other religions, who are more far committed in their discipleship than Western Christians who have vast libraries of biblical material at their disposal. You see, the issue here is not on what we know, but upon how we respond to or act upon that which we do know. Jesus says there are two responses to his message. Two and two alone. One is to hear and obey, and the other is to hear and disobey. There is no middle ground here. <clears throat> whether you hear or, and obey or whether you hear and disobey, Jesus makes it rather clear. Knowing is not sufficient. Giving mental assent to his message in and of itself will not do. Even being a church member is not going to get you to heaven. If you are really his disciple, if you are really one who follows him, you will do what he has said. And that is the line of demarcation, the difference between those who authentically are his disciples and those who merely claim to be. Those who hear and obey are likened unto the wise man who built his house upon the rock. And when the rain falls and the floods come and the winds blow, this house stands. And those who hear and for whatever reason fail to obey, their lives will not stand. The rains, the winds, and the floods will destroy them. The foundation of our lives is truth. This is the truth we find in the Word of God. The building blocks of our life are to be found in obedience to His Word. When our lives are transformed by His power, when the indwelling of His Holy Spirit forever changes our hearts, our actions will consequently change as well. Mm. Those who hear and obey are building with solid rock. Those who hear and disobey are building with wood, hay, and stubble. The quality of the material with which we build our lives will always be tested and will ultimately be tested on Judgment Day when the books are opened and the truth of our lives is examined before all of creation. Jesus is telling us here that the authentic authenticity of our discipleship will be readily evident in how we respond to what he has told us. If we do not love our neighbor as ourselves, if we do not forgive as we have been forgiven, if we are hypo hypocritical and judgmental, if we hold anger and resentment in our hearts, if we do not love as we have been loved, in spite of what we profess, irrespective of what we might claim, we are not his disciples. His disciples practice what he has preached. They are not practicing what he preaches in order to become his disciples, but rather they are practicing what he preaches because they have been transformed 
They love him and have been enabled through his power to keep his commandments. So salvation is not through works, but is evidenced by our works. I got to say that one more time. So salvation is not through works, but is evidenced by our works. Hmm. Mm-mm. Jesus is clearly calling for a positive response to his message. He is calling us to hear and to obey. He is asking us to take a long, hard look at our own lives to see where we are spiritually. Mm, that's deep. As 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you not recognize for yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless you fail the test? In this text, Jesus is summing up his sermon by asking us to examine our own lives, to see if we are building our lives on the solid rock of his truth, or on the sinking sands of false philosophies. And he does this because there are results to our choices. Jesus is calling us to a serious time of self-examination because the results of our response to his message are eternal. The results are very clear. There is a stark contrast between those who hear and obey and those who hear and disobey. Those who hear and obey have eternal life. Nothing can take it from them. Their lives are built on the solid rock, which is Christ Jesus. Those who hear and disobey are building their houses on sand. Whatever they have built will not stand the test of time. In the world in which you and I live, everyone is building something. Eh? Some are building lives that will last. They are walking in obedience to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. They are in constant fellowship with him, sensitive to his spirit's voice, listening carefully, leaning not on their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledging him. Their lives are being built with solid, indestructible materials. But others are building their lives with things that cannot last. Their houses may look similar. Externally, they may be similar in appearance, to those built of rock, but structurally, they are different. They are built upon a shoddy foundation, upon the ever-changing sense of human effort and self-will. That's the question that Jesus is asking each of us this evening. Are you doing what I have said? To what degree are you obeying the teachings of our Lord? And to what degree are you making excuses for your disobedience? Upon what are you building your life today? Are you building your life on the solid rock of God's word? Are the building materials of your life made of acts of obedience? Will what you are building stand the test of time? Or perhaps you are here this evening and you know deep within your heart that there is a difference between what you profess and what you possess. That when all things are revealed, you will be found out to be a fraud. Perhaps you are here this evening or you are listening and are watching on the internet, and deep within your heart, you know that you are not walking in obedience to what Jesus has said. Others may think you are a fine, upstanding Christian, 
but it's really not that difficult to fool others. It is, however, impossible to fool God. Brothers and sisters, God is calling you to himself. He is calling you to become a true disciple, an authentic follower of him. He is calling you to commit yourself to him and to his kingdom. Maybe you're here listening and you've never given your heart and life to Jesus. And right now, for the very first time, you want to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You want to know forgiveness of sins and the peace that only he can give you. Or perhaps you are listening and there are some areas of your life where you know you are not walking the talk, not living the Christian life others think you live. Every one of us should have a commitment card. There are three boxes that you can check. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the hour. This is the day. This is the time for you to change your eternal destiny. Today you can choose to hear and obey. If you are here and you need to give your heart and your life to Jesus, I want you to check that box. Perhaps you are here today and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, but you need to be obedient and follow him in believer's baptism. The second box is there for you. Perhaps you are here today and you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you need to be obedient and follow him. This is a time for each of us to examine our own walk with God to see whether or not we have a winning witness or a waning witness. Don't be a waning witness. Maybe the Spirit of God has convicted you, showing you that there is a discrepancy between what you say and what you do. And it is... And it just may be that he is leading you to say that this year would you would recommit yourself to become the disciple Jesus has called you to be, to follow him wherever he leads, to do whatever he says, to hold nothing back, but to follow him with total abandon, to surrender everything you are and what you and everything you have to him and to walk in perfect obedience god loves us people god loves us how much does he loves us he loves us so much that he sent us his only begotten son so that whoever believeth in him may not perish but have everlasting life but Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world but to save the world give the Lord your heart today and accept him as your Lord and Savior accept him as your Lord and Savior it will be the best decision you have ever made in your whole life amen love you all